second plane load of medical supplies already landed in Israel, intended for the Palestinians to help them face the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Now, Israeli officials said that unlike the first plane load delivered May 19th, rejected outright by the Palestinians, the plane tonight is marked, as you see here, with the national carrier's logo, Etihad Airways. A well, Palestinian official told Al Jazeera that this flight, organized by the UN, was for a second time arranged without coordination with the Palestinian Authority, which was also the official reason given for Ramallah's decision to reject the first shipment. Now, for more on this story, we're joined by Rabbi Mark Schneier. Thanks for being with us, uh, Rabbi. Always good to have you here, a special advisor to the King of Bahrain and, and, and other roles around the Gulf uh, region now. So I want to get your perspective on this, uh, Rabbi. What's the story with these UAE plans of medical supplies organized by the UN's World Food Program? Uh, with the Palestinians claiming they don't know about it. Is this, a, is this a feud between the UAE and the Palestinian Authority? Well, it's a clear message that's being sent by the UAE that they will not be deterred by this Palestinian outburst in rejecting and refusing these medical supplies. The fact that they will not be deterred uh, despite uh, the Palestinians rejecting the first plane load several weeks ago, uh, they have now brought a second plane load. And this time, uh, it's not a secret. You know, this time the plane arrived uh, with the Etihad logo. Uh, it's very, very clear, and it's widely seen that this is a United Arab Emirates plane. And I think that the UAE is taking a very public stand in making it known that they are here to better the welfare and well-being of the Palestinian people while at the same time they continue to go on the path of warming relations with the state of Israel. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, a clear message seems like a, a very determined, as you put it, uh, message here too, raising a lot of questions here where this was the Palestinians' reason for not accepting, at least officially, the first shipment was that they didn't want to serve as some sort of cover for diplomatic uh, improvements between the two countries. But that first plane was unmarked, so that, that argument fell flat to some degree now. So this is them really sticking it to the Palestinians in a way that, that they're out to do this, that they are, in fact, out to improve relations? That's, is that what we're left to really understand? There, there's a very healthy competition that's now taking place in the Gulf as to which Gulf state can out Israel the other. There are six Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, and Oman. And it's like a horse race, you know, which horse, you know, today is leading the race in terms of getting closer to Israel. There are days when I would bet on the Bahrainian horse. There is no other leader more than King Hamid, His Majesty, King of Bahrain, who's more committed to having diplomatic relations with Israel. You have a state like Qatar, which is the only one of the Arabian Gulf states that Israel is working publicly with. Uh, in Gaza, you know, the Qataris bringing aid to the Palestinians in Gaza is not at the blessing of the Israelis, it's at the request of the Israelis. And now you see that the United Arab Emirates is joining in this very, very healthy competition. And there are many other pronouncements coming out of the United Arab Emirates that really augur well for improved relations between Israel and the Gulf. Uh, on that note, and this is uh, probably the hottest topic right now coming out of Israel, this issue of annexation of certain West Bank areas. What's the Gulf country's stance on this issue? We haven't heard much from them. And, and maybe how does President Trump factor into that? Listen, there, there is a deafening silence. But one thing I have heard from Gulf leaders, you know, on the very top level uh, throughout the pandemic, that the issue of combating and fighting COVID-19, that transcends political and ideological differences. This is a lane that both the Gulf states and Israel uh, can journey on and can work um, in cooperation uh, in terms of uh, trying to find the vaccine, the cure I've heard from 
uh, several Gulf leaders with our wealth and resources and Israel's brain trust, uh, scientific know-how and technology. Together, we can find the panacea, we can find the cure of the vaccine, not only for the Middle East, but for the world at large. So I think that when it comes to combating this as existentialist threat, a threat to all citizens across the Middle East, a threat to Israeli citizens and to Gulf citizens, this is a wonderful opportunity of cooperation between the Gulf and Israel. Well, Rabbi Mark Schneier, always eye-opening and encouraging to speak with you on these issues. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.